Jordan Peterson is returning. He's returned. He made this video. I have not watched it. Let's take a look. Hi, everyone. As some of you may know, but others will not, it's been a long while since I put up any new content on this YouTube channel. I've been suffering from impaired health, severely impaired health, as a consequence of benzodiazepine use for anxiety, or more accurately, from a combination of using that medication and then ceasing its use once I realized it was dangerous. I think benzodiazepines are like Valiums, and uh, I think I think like I think that's what that's what they are. So Xanax, Valium, I believe that's what a benzodiazepine is. Um, <laughs> that's put me in and out of hospitals for much of the last year in. Connecticut in the United States, in Toronto, in Canada, in Moscow, in Russia, and in Belgrade, Serbia. And Damn, could you imagine what a hospital in Serbia is like? How the hell did he end up there? As my family searched for specialists who could aid me in the severe post-use withdrawal and neurological damage-related consequences of both the benzodiazepine use and, and its cessation. Um, I started taking it in 2016, 2017, early 2017, according to the prescribed um, recommendations, and really never give it a second thought. Uh, that was a mistake, uh, to say the least. Anyways, I've learned some things during that trying time, I suppose, or at least I I can tell you what kept me going during what was certainly the worst period of my life. Um, family, that's for sure. Uh, friends, and the work I was able to continue doing as I was able to continue writing um, something that I'll talk about probably within the next month. My family my wife, Tammy, my son, Julian, and his wife, Jillian, and my daughter, Michaela, and her husband, Andre, have been of inestimable value to me and provided me with tremendous support during this period. Um, Michaela and Andre accompanied me to Russia and to Serbia. For what, for what it's worth, by the way, um, I like Jordan Peterson. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of Jordan Peterson. Uh, he... He was really early on in the whole movement of like the, you know, kind of the dark web, intellectual dark web and all that stuff. And, you know, when people, when people really started to get on the, like the Joe Rogan bandwagon and the Sam Harris and kind of these like free thinking social commentators or whatever, um, you know, Jordan Peterson was obviously one of the big ones. I think it is good for people to, you know, listen to other people and take take motivation, take inspiration, take thoughts, you know, hear different sides of the argument, stuff like that. But um, I do think, I think Jordan Peterson, from what I've seen, I think a lot of his fans have suffered from the same thing as Joe Rogan, where instead of taking what he says and using it in their own life, they just try and replicate their life. Like they try and replicate being Jordan Peterson or replicate being Joe Rogan. Um, which I which I always think is kind of dangerous because then you're not you're not living you're just kind of like acting at that point. But I but I do think Jordan Peterson um, is very interesting. I have listened to a lot of his stuff and I do like uh, his way of thinking for sure. Uh, both of those episodes were extremely grueling and lasted for months. Um, but I'm alive, and I have plans for the future. I want to thank those people from the bottom of my heart, my extended family and friends, whom I will name elsewhere, went above and beyond the call of duty in my estimation. I'm certainly not convinced that I would have the character to provide to any one of them what they provided to me. So that was a humbling lesson, I suppose. Um, my work this sort of work, although it was all writing and not video production, was also extremely useful because I could 
sustain myself by producing and then culling through thoughts that were helpful despite my anguish, I suppose. And I'm still not totally sure like what was ailing him. And maybe y'all know better than I do chat, but it sounds like he was having anxiety or whatever problems and then was using Valiums and, and, and whatnot. And then, or drugs like that and under a prescription and then maybe got hooked on them and then quit using them, had withdrawals and that sent him in a tailspin. I'm, I'm not sure I'm picking up what he's putting down. My lack of hope for the future. Um, hopefully we'll see, but hopefully much of that is behind me and I can return to something resembling a normal life. I can tell you what my plans are for video production, at least for the next while. I completed a biblical series devoted to Genesis in fall of 2017, and that has proved very popular. I, I, it's a strange word to use for a lecture series like that. Um, I'm going to start working on the next book in the Old Testament, which is Exodus, but in that will take a while. But in the interim, I think I'm going to produce videos devoted to Proverbs, the book of wisdom, essentially, or a book of wisdom. Um, you've all heard, no doubt, that wisdom is proverbial, or, is that, or that there's such a thing as proverbial wisdom, and that phrase stems from the book of Proverbs, which are single sentence aphorisms if uh what he is dealing with is like withdrawals and stuff like that then yeah i mean work i would i would think getting back to work or, or using your mind to just you know fill the time is so paramount like just sitting around doing nothing or just focusing on the withdrawals or focusing on the, the strife that can be brutal but if you can put your focus and mind and thoughts and whatever into something else then yeah certainly would would ease that transition i would think imparting some truth. I think the analysis of those, which can be done in a relatively short period of time, will prove of benefit to me and perhaps to those who are inclined to watch or listen to my analysis. Um, I would also like to thank all of you for continuing to support my work. I have far more followers on YouTube and Instagram and Twitter for that matter than I did before I became ill and my book has sold very well in in multiple languages and that <laughs> this is something else that's interesting this is more like a media thing but YouTube is so interesting for that because you know I like to think of YouTube like when we're on Twitch it's in the here and now you know what I mean even like a book a lot of times is uh, like YouTube, where if you do, st if you put videos out there, if you just put stuff out there, they're there. They're in the ether. It's up to the universe to find them. And if the universe does find them, you can always, you know, people can always uh, get a part of you. You're almost immortal. Whereas, you know, even though he's struggling, even though he's in and out of hospitals in Serbia and Moscow and Connecticut, on YouTube, he's just still there. You know, so it's interesting to see how, like, even though he's disappeared basically for whatever three years he has enough work on youtube to where it has sustained and grown um his his, his base or whatever or his followers or fans or, or readers or listeners or whatever and uh, i've talked about it before some of, some of my most popular videos are videos that i've done six seven years ago that just for whatever reason just keep getting viewed you know just keep getting seen videos with 60 70 thousand uh views people commenting on them six years after they were made. So YouTube is very good for that. YouTube is bad about a lot of things and it's saturating a lot of things, but the fact that it's like a forever trove is uh, is, is very, is a huge deal. That's why I always tell people it's better to make like evergreen content or content that can just sit and be, be strong in, you know, over years and months. And that's, that's a great thing to do on YouTube. And that's really amazing and remarkable. And I hope that what I produce in the future will, that people will find it of 
equal or greater utility. That's an ambitious hope, given how much attention what I've produced before has garnered, but it still seems appropriate, an appropriate goal for my upcoming activities. I guess I could let you all know as well that we've put together, and this is an initiative that was spearheaded by Michaela and Andre, we've put together the ability to translate the YouTube lectures into a variety of languages. I think it's six at the moment. Six will be ruled out over the next few months, professionally translated, dubbed, because our analysis indicated that in most of these markets, dubbed videos are preferred to subtitled videos. And so that will provide the opportunity for the ideas I've been developing, uh, many of which I have derived from other sources, to be sure, to have an impact beyond the English language speaking world. Uh, there seems to be some desire for that. Um, my book, my last book, 12 Rules for Life, sold 300,000 copies in South Korea, for example, which very much surprised me because I wasn't sure that the ideas, well, first were translatable, but were going to be a multicultural acceptable uh, in a culture with such a different developmental background. Anyways, I'm not going to make this a long video. I wanted to tell you that I'm back in Toronto, that I'm in much better health, although it's still severely impaired, especially in the morning. Um, but I can work again, and I really want to. Um, and that to let you know that with God's grace and mercy, um, I'll be able to start generating original material once again and pick up where I left off. Um, thank you very much. And I wish I wish he would have went into like what he's dealing with. I mean, he keeps talking about how how impaired he is and all that stuff, especially in the morning. I wonder what I wonder what he's going through as far as like what his symptoms are and what he's struggling with. I, w I, I mean, I would be very interested to hear about what he's actually going. Through. It's interesting when you see people. I mean, this happens way more than people think. Like these thinkers or whatever you want to call them, but even novelists and all that to suffer from whatever depression addiction you know whatever it ailments and i don't even know what he's going through but it doesn't change you know like what the brilliance or whatever i think a lot of people get that mixed up where they may have looked at jordan peterson like well how can i listen to him if he couldn't even stay away from whatever or if he fell victim to this and i think they're missing the point you know a lot of the times like sometimes the best coaches or sometimes the best whatever are not the people who do it. It's just the people who can like see it, talk about it, break it down and, and send it, you know? So hopefully this doesn't derail Jordan Peterson or anything. And hopefully he gets back to where he was. We always need more thinkers in this world. We need uh, more critical thinkers and more speakers and whatever. So um, West, uh, best wishes to Jordan.